I'm Julie Nelson. I'm from Quincy, Illinois, and um, I'm an artist who makes uh, watercolors, and they're still from still lifes, from nature, and um, I've been making art this time for about two years, and I grew up in an art household, and uh, got my BFA and MFA from Northern Illinois University in DeKalb, and then got into the museum world for 30 years. Um, I work from still lifes that I create myself, and sometimes creating the still life is just as important as the painting itself, because I want to have something beautiful to look at that I feel is beautiful, even though it might be kind of wacky and a little different for others. You know, I'm, I'm looking at certain things in there to pull out. Um, then when I, when I make the paintings, um, I don't do a preliminary drawing at all. I just uh, start painting directly. And I might choose, you know, like the brightest colors or the lightest colors. Watercolorists know that you're supposed to start with yellow, you know, your palest colors and then add to that. Well, sometimes I'll, I'll do that. Sometimes I'll add another, start with another sort of real strong color and then work out from there. But it's, it's about half or two thirds of the piece is painted and the other part is, is marker. So I'm, I'm looking for lines. So I'm working back and forth between line and area, line and area. And I stand back and this goes on for days. And then, and then, meanwhile, the still life starts drooping. <laughs> so I have to, I get to a point where I have to work fast. But sometimes, like leaves have actually changed colors um, in the still life while I've been painting. And I think, you know, I like that better yellow than it was as a green leaf. So I'll add a new, some new yellow leaves. So sometimes nature provides uh, surprises that you get to go with. One of, the, one of the things I noticed right away, having been away from it for a couple of weeks, is uh, the colors in the linear work. And I've, I just kind of do that naturally. I look for in the weeds and, and different stalks and branches, and so I'm, I'm looking for color and shape and trying to, you know, have them Inter, intermesh and interact in different ways. And being away from the paintings, um, I'd almost forgotten uh, the different colored networks that were in there. And I thought, oh, that's good. <laughs> that's a good thing that happened. But, but um, I know sometimes artists will see their work on display and think, oh, I've got to work bigger, or I've got, I've got they've done that with me. They've, you know, I've, when, that, when I was in museum work, they'd say, I came in, I saw my work around the walls, and I decided to go bigger, and now I have a show in New York. So, so it really, it's, it's wonderful for the artist to have an exhibit and see their work in a foreign environment, you know, a different environment. My name is Matt Urban. I'm a glass artist. I live here in Bloomington Normal, Illinois. Uh, I've been making glass for the past 20 years, just about 20 years now. I went to the Illinois State University here for the, uh, for, uh, through their graduate program. And when I got out, I built a little studio and I've been making glass here now for about six years. I started off as an industrial design student at the University of Arts in Philadelphia and uh, part of the curriculum was needing to take a, uh, uh, an elective outside of the major. One semester I took ceramics and the next semester I took glass and I really enjoyed glass. Um, part of it, a lot of it had to do with the immediacy of the material even though the reality is there's a lot more time involved in understanding how to use the material. Then, uh, then you would. Uh, there's a strange little dichotomy that goes on there. Like, oh wow, this thing's done in no time. Yeah, how long did it take you to make that object? How long did it take you to learn how to make that object? So, but I was attracted to that in industrial design. I enjoyed the history of design, 
quite a bit. Um, but they were moving towards nanotechnology and digital everything and you don't have to worry about making models and you don't have to worry about how things work or understand mechanical things and I was I was really interested in being hands-on and developing models and understanding the way things worked and glass allowed me to continue to design to continue to draw and I was able to make now I could see everything from the beginning of the process to the end of the process and if I didn't like the way something was I could change it right there and then and the other part with the way I work is it's very I think extremely environmentally friendly as far as these processes can go and that was also important to me is not to be making millions and millions and millions of things that perhaps could be detrimental to the environment all the material I use in my shop is all recycled glass and I use um, an electric furnace with a super low carbon footprint so it allows me to operate at a very low overhead and be a little bit more in tune with the environment you know, um, I think I think there's a there's a number of different things that compel me in this, but definitely I'm process driven. Uh, when I'm working in the shop, I studied with nine different master glassmakers from the island of Murano, um, and they're like magicians. They're most of them are in their 80s now or don't work anymore or have passed away. But you see these guys working and their understanding of the materials and processes for me was awe inspiring. So I try and I, I try and uh, emulate the things that I learned from them and I try to build on the shoulders of the things that I was barely starting to understand when I work with them. I take those and amplify those and that's what allows me me to do what I do right now. That's the most compelling thing is to be extremely productive when I'm working, which also, you know what I mean, reduces my impact on the environment because my studio only has to be on for a certain amount of time for me to be able to develop the work that I need. My name is Julia Davis and I have my own law firm called Julia Davis Law Firm LLC and I provide services to the community. Uh, for guardianships, adoptions, real estate, including residential and commercial, and all sorts of other things such as estate planning. My parents were um, members of the Art Center many, many years ago, I believe in the 70s, and I grew up uh, coming to the Art Center and have always loved all the exhibitions and special events that have gone on through the McLean County Art Center. And approximately five years ago, or maybe only four years ago, I became a board member for the Arts Center and um, was so pleased to be able to assist in other, in other capacities for the Arts Center and am so thrilled to be a part of this exhibit and to be a sponsor through my firm. Hi, I'm Robert McDonald. I'm a CPA, Certified Public Accountant here in Bloomington. Well, I, I am the owner of Robert McDonald and Company, PC, and we provide accounting and tax services primarily to small businesses and individuals in the area. So I, um, uh, I became involved with the uh, Art Center uh, fairly recently. Uh, a friend of mine uh, invited me to an exhibition and I was, I was just very impressed. Um, I really have not been involved in arts uh, during my life, and I am now, and, um, and I like it. So uh, I am very pleased to be uh, a sponsor of my first uh, exhibition, along with uh, Julia Davis.